We're going to take you live to Canberra now, where Transport Minister Catherine King is releasing the government's aviation white paper. Aviation fuel and other low carbon liquid fuels with measures to support the development of this market. The 2024 white paper is a result of months of detailed consultations. There were over 2,096 submissions, uh, 22 roundtables, and I want to thank everybody who took part and participated in that, and I particularly acknowledge the work of my department uh, un undertaking all of that. Uh, these reforms will support a fairer, more sustainable and more competitive future for aviation, and I am, of course, very happy to take questions. Minister, Hello. Um, a lot of Paid a refund when planes don't uh, take off as they were promised. But do you think that the uh, size of the aviation industry in Australia can actually sustain that? Or would those penalties drive airlines through? So what we've done is developed the Ombudsman Scheme and there's a consultation paper that's going out on that today as we speak here. Uh, that really allows a complaints mechanism for the first time that is specifically focused on airlines and airports as well. And what that will allow is for people to be able to directly put in complaints to that ombudsperson, as well as seek remedies uh, that will be legislated as part of that scheme. Uh, it may well be that compensation be one of the remedies that the ombudsperson recommends and that that, that may be part of the remedies. Uh, and that, So we haven't ruled out that that's the case. Uh, but what we think is that this provides a better opportunity for continuous improvement. And what we all want to see is, in fact, that customers get what they pay for. Uh, you've bought a ticket. If the flight doesn't go, or the flight doesn't go when you expect it to go, you should expect that that's the service that is provided. And so really this is about providing remedies to consumers uh, who have found it very difficult to pursue these issues and also getting continuous improvement in our airlines and our airports. Minister, if, yes. if consumers don't get what they pay for, uh, for example, they might be booked on a 9 o'clock flight and it leaves at 1130 are those the circumstances in which you think there would be a, a cash refund? Again, that'll be a matter for the Ombudsman scheme to look at, but instituting a charter of rights, what the expectations are and ex expectations that consumers can have of their airlines and their airports is part of what the ombudsman will do, ombudsperson will do, uh, as well as looking at the remedies that are part of but that. I'm just, I'm did you say that the customers have the right to get what they pay for? Yes. Let me just let's drill down on that. What do you think customers pay for when you have thousands upon thousands of people who are inconvenienced um, through every week at Australian airports because they, their flight is cancelled or delayed. Yep. Which is, which is exactly why we've asked First Airlines to be much more transparent and show cause. What is the cause of delays? Now, obviously, there are causes that are beyond their control. So last night I was delayed getting out of Melbourne because there was a significant weather event. But if it is because uh, there has been overbooking or there is something that has occurred uh, that is not, um, not in the, the usual, not, not reasonable, uh, then it will be up to airlines to explain that but also where cons consumers are seeking a refund, seeking compensation or seeking a credit or a flight uh, that actually does uh, provide them that opportunity, this Ombudsman scheme will provide opportunities for that to occur. But building in the Charter of Rights, making it really clear that if you, if you book a ticket uh, and that's the service you expect, that there are remedies for people in relation to that if that's not what they receive. Yes, at the back. You could have pulled a lot more levers here. Uh, pulled out a much bigger stick in terms of what, what's been talk, talked about. Were the conversations with Qantas and Virgin, did they say to you that, that this would be very damaging if you went down and pulled out a bigger stick and set much more requirements? I, I haven't had conversations with Qantas and Virgin about that. They may have views that they have expressed through the submission process uh, of the aviation white paper. But what I would say is one of the considerations, of course, that I had to take into account is whether airlines would risk factor in and, in, you know, that potentially... Uh, risk factoring that in could lead to higher airfares. I've obviously had to have a look at that and that's one of the factors I've brought into consideration. But the ombudsperson will have the opportunity uh, to say whether compensation should be paid if there's been a, you know, an unreasonable breach in terms of the consumer law. And what about regular 
facilities for um, misuse or non-compliance by airlines and airports? And will their services also be subject to similar penalties for the delays that they are responsible sure. for? Well, certainly in terms of delays that might be uh, because of air traffic controllers, as you're aware, we have a shortage of staff in terms of air traffic controllers because a number of them uh, took redundancies during uh, the COVID years as well, and we want to see uh, more people back into this sector. Uh, that certainly, uh, in terms of show calls, that will be one of the causes that, that needs to be uh, put out into the public domain. Minister, just so, with the uh, yes. shortage on air traffic controllers, what can the government do about that? Well, we've got a number of um, initiatives that are part of the white paper about recruiting across the aviation sector. It's not just air traffic controllers. We need more pilots. Uh, we need more cabin crew. We need, need more people who are involved in the services sector, both customer service and all of the underwing services as well. Uh, our changes to industrial relations laws uh, do make it a much more attractive industry to be part of, but certainly uh, one of the things that we are doing through Jobs and Skills Australia is looking at those specific measures to bring in uh, air traffic controllers, make sure that young people who are looking for careers see this as a viable option, as well as improvements to Air Services Australia as well. Minister, yes, Minister, of course. you mentioned the um, legislative drafting on the Sydney airport reforms. Would yep. you hope to have them passed in this term of Parliament? And when should Melbourne Airport expect a decision on the third runway? Yeah, so the decision on Melbourne Airport is before me at the moment, so I really can't make any commentary about that as a decision maker. Uh, but equally, uh, in terms of the slot reform legislation, that is being drafted currently and we would expect it to be before the Parliament shortly. Yep. There's, there's more data on um, uh, aircraft noise complaints, a new ombudsman to complain to and a request that pilots fly considerately, but can you explain what difference that would make to people living under or near flight paths in terms of the amount of aircraft noise? Well, I think it would be fair to say that you know, the way in which, in particular, um, you know, Air Services Australia, you know, it, it hasn't been, pardon the pun, but on its radar in terms of aircraft noise being the predominant issue uh, issue that needs to be looked at in terms of flight paths. Uh, it is obviously one of the issues, safety being the first. And so having an independent ombudsman or ombudsperson allows the opportunity for people to have confidence that it is not the same people who've developed the flight paths, who've actually been part of developing the flight paths, that is also investigating complaints about flight paths. So separating that out, I think, provides uh, people who are under flight paths, who are experiencing aircraft noise, an independent process to be able to look that, uh, to look, uh, to have that complaint handled and to be treated, you know, seriously by air services and CASA as well.